Hello everybody, in today's video I'm going to talk about something that's really, really exciting. Um, I was not anticipating that they would do anything like this, and if it's true, it's going to be really great for pretty much everybody. Um, so, the test notes released yesterday, and the thing we're going to talk about here is main strikes have been overhauled, CA section for more information. So let's scroll down here. Bean strike ability to overhaul in order to provide more consistent in uh, power. Basically, when as you do it, you're going to get two, four, seven, ten percent increase in base power to your beneficial and detrimental spells, songs, and combat abilities, as well as base uh, melee damage. So basically, you're going to kill things quicker. And if you do the mega death, the achievement, it's basically ten percent more. DPS to whatever you do. So really good. Um, anybody could do this. The reason why they did the overhaul is basically to try and reduce uh, zone lag. So that's uh, added bonus. So Bane Strike, some of you may know what it is, some of you may not. Uh, Alakaz Ham has a pretty good write-up on it. Obviously they're going to change it as the um, stuff gets released. But what I like most is Bond's website, and I'll put links to everything in the description, but basically every achievement he has it listed and suggested zones. Now the mentality that you want for your suggested zone is obviously mob density of the mobs you want, but also respawn time. Because you want, the general idea is you want to be constantly killing the stuff that you need, not having to wait for respawns. So a great example would be like plane of um, the elemental planes in POP. Those have a really long repop time, so that's not going to be ideal. You know, you're going to want to try and go to like low level newbie zones that respawn fast. So bonds is probably the best. Okay, so if in game. If you go into achievements and then you'll see Slayer, end goal is Mega Death, basically Force of Nature, highly decorated and progressive. And it's going to show you the achievements. And those achievements are broken down into the conquest uh, special and skill. So, what I would suggest for folks is if you just started or just start caring about it, just kind of like myself now. Look at the conquest ones and um, just work off of those. These are going to be the highest kill counts that you need. And it will kind of work itself out for the lower tree, the easier ones. And you may need to come back and just pluck a little bit here and there. But if you do the massive killing ones, that's going to be the best. So, for example, here I need the swordfish mermaid. Basically, you know, 2,700 more kills. Uh, Bond suggested Siren's Grotto, the old world one. So here we are. Now, a couple of things as far as, you know, play nice and, you know, just not doing bad things morally. Um, and some of you may agree, some of you may not, but this is how I'm going to be doing it. And hopefully others will follow suit. So this is obviously going to be a big power up and many people that haven't done it, like myself, are going to start doing it. So zones are going to get kind of crowded and, um, you know, you may come across other people. So what I would suggest is if you see other people in zone and they're active and killing, form a raid. So basically what happens with the slayers, um, and they're different than hunters. So slayers count for everybody that's in the zone. You cannot form a raid and have someone in, you know, East Karana and then someone in Siren's Grotto and they both get credits. No. The way it works for Slayers is they have to be in zone. So if you see somebody random doing the same kind of thing, say, hey, you know, why don't we form a raid and you kill on one side and I'll kill on the other side. So, for example, I say raid invite my decor or, or somebody. They're going to go, okay, cool. Here, uh, I'll accept your raid. 
So now the raid should form as soon as flag goes through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. I think that person. Okay. There it goes. Okay. So raid is formed. What the raid leader is going to want to do is go to options. Set loot to entire raid so that if the other people are killing on the other side zone, they'll have like a little free grab symbol and they'll just grab their stuff on their side. You grab stuff on your side, nothing rots and everybody is happy as can be. Um, when the raid is done, like you say, uh, hey, I gotta go. Thank you very much. Slash kick players raid. It's going to give you a confirmation box. It's going to disband the raid and maintain your group. So basically everyone goes off and it's a happy ending. Everybody got what they need to do. Now there will be times and you know this is not something I condone. You'll see someone AFK and potentially you know killing stuff without being at the keyboard. I do not suggest that like for sure, I've seen you know many people get banned or suspended by doing those things. Even players not using you know third-party programs that just have a pet and then just AFK. I've seen people get you know reported and suspended for that as well. So you know I would not suggest that at all. We all put in a lot of time for our characters, so do the best and not be lazy about it. Just work it out and do what you need to do. So farming old world content, kind of boring. If you're a melee class, caster class, it's just like, uh, I like pet classes to do this kind of stuff. So for example, here I have my uh, Necro and with a pet. Now this is the important thing. If you make a hotkey, just like how it shows here, pet, you know, give it a name. First line, pet attack A underscore. And then the second line, pet attack N underscore. What this will do is it will send your pet to attack any mob that starts with the letter A something or N something, which happens to be quite a bit. This will do a, a reasonable amount around where you are. So just to show this in practical use, I'm going to place it on my hotbar button one. I'm going to press it and then you'll see the pet is off and it's going. It died. All right, so and then just keep on hitting the button. I have my shaman on my other machine on the other side. So basically the same thing. He has his pet and I'm just going to be hitting one on both machines and you'll see that things are dying, achievements are going, you know, they're ticking off and rinse repeat. It's an awful grind um, but you will get trade skill items and you know anybody could do this right. The, there's no limitation. It's not like something Uber only raiders could do or anything like that. It just requires time. And you're going to get 10% base uh, bonus, which is really good. Like once you use discs and everything that are multiples of it, you know, it's going to be significant DPS boost. So what, again, this is on test and assuming everything goes to, as they say, it's going to be a really big DPS boost for anybody that chooses to do this. So that's the video. Um, play nice with other people. You're going to see a lot of folks in these big zones, especially the ones that Bond's listed, because those are really the most ideal. And, you know, talk to them, do the best you can to communicate, form raids so that it will save time for everybody and not push people off or make bad feelings or anything like that. Alright guys, so hope folks find this useful. Thank you and have a good one.